Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. It's Steve Bamford here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We are covering the 2023 Wells Fargo Championship on the PGA Tour. It's lovely to have you aboard. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, and I know you do, please bear responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource oh loads on there today absolutely loads on there uh the brand new predictor models we've got and when i say models i've got pga tour and dp world tour because they're playing the italian open on the Ryder cup course this week uh we've also got strokes gained rankings for both events the wells fargo on the pga tour the italian open on the dp world tour there's loads of course form combination form so form in against course form it's all available at golf basis it's all completely free of charge why are you paying for these services no paywall golf betting system completely free of charge received a fantastic email this week actually from someone just saying thank you very much you helped me to find austin smotherman in the Mexico Open through your combined course form and current form combined spreadsheet that we put on Golf Betting System each and every week. There you go. That's what we do here. And he said, the guy said, you don't, there's no pay. We don't have to pay for you. It's all free. Exactly right. Golf Betting System. Right. Last week, um, Tony Finau, 8-1. to one, Just the, uh, the boredom continues with these short price winners. Did Scrag Akshay Bhartia though full each way payout ninety to one so covered the week made a little bit of profit. This week we are playing the Wells Fargo at Quail Hollow. It's a designated event, but there were a few of the big names: Scheffler, Ram, not attending. What do I need from you? Let's have a hundred likes. I know the video is going out slightly later this week. 100 likes. We then got the Byron Nelson next week and the PGA Championship the week after that. I can't wait. So 100 likes, please. If you're new to the channel, the golf, the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, two shows every week. We've got the Golf Betting Show, this one, and then we have the Golf Betting System podcast that will come out later this week. Give it a listen. Please subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know who you are backing in the comments section below. I read each and every one of them. If you talk crap to me, I just ban you. So, just to get that out there. Had a few stupid people recently. You just get banned. So, don't bother. As my mum used to say, if you've got nothing nice to say, just don't say anything. I know that's difficult for uh, the odd person out there. Right. Wells Fargo Championship 2023. We are seeing, uh, it was 2021, 24 months ago we last saw the Quail Hollow Club on the PGA Tour. It's a beauty, isn't it? I absolutely love this golf course. I love this tournament. Uh, a classical, old style golf course. It isn't that old in reality, but it certainly looks like one. Classical Carolina in its set up so plenty of dog legs tree lined but this is a carolina golf club on speed it's a golf course on speed 7538 yards they've extended it again for this uh it's a par 71 ouch the only courses going back in my mind that are anywhere were near this length and a par 71 and were not a major uh, Beth Page Black, where they played the Barclays tournament in the park, and also the AT&T National that was played, and the Quicken's Lone National Tigers tournament back in the day, played at the Blue Course at Congressional on the PGA Tour. Long, long golf courses. This will sort the wheat from the chaff. This golf course, when Rory McIlroy won here in 2021, played as the fifth most difficult course on the whole of the PGA Tour. That includes majors as well. In 2019, it was slightly easier, but it still played a three-quarters of a shot, on average, above par. 
eight of 49 courses that year and the wind didn't really blow. Uh, the wind isn't set to blow this week either. So don't think this is going to be in any way, shape or form a birdie fest that we saw last week in Mexico and what we're going to see at the Byron Nelson next week in Texas. This is a proper big boy golf course. It's built and the whole tournament is built around players that can play major championships and can compete at a golf course where par is a very good score on tons of par threes and par fours. The, the, the real knack here, and it's like a lot of classical golf courses and a lot of uh, courses made, you've got to get to the par fives. That's where this tournament will be won. Also a couple of drivable par fours. Make your, your scores there and hold on for grim death around the rest of the course. There has been plenty of rain in the area last week, but I saw this a few years ago here before the Wells Fargo. Loads of rain, you think it's going to play soft, and then all of a sudden you turn on the coverage on a Thursday and those greens have already got a little bit of release in them, a little bit of zip. This has full sub air. Um, I think they would need torrential rain for a number of days through tournament Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get this course really super soft. Might be wrong, but I think there's going to be some release in the greens. It's a proper major championship test. In terms of the agronomy, we've got 419 Bermuda grass on the fairways, 419 Bermuda grass rough, which is overseeded with perennial rye, slows the course down. Two inches the uh, the rough this week. Also, greens, 6,578 square feet on average. They feature champion Bermuda grass, so not tip eagle, champion Bermuda grass. And again, as we've seen this trend all the way through 2023 on a lot of these Bermuda grass golf courses, overseeded with Poa Trivialis. Um, yeah, weather, pretty placid really, uh, nice 21, 22 degrees, uh, that is Fahrenheit 71, warm enough, I think the Saturday might be cooler, but then it warms up again on the Sunday, no, I mean, I look at this in terms of Mondays and Tuesdays, no real threat of wind, that might crop up, who knows, but... It's just the only thing that really grabbed me was this 86 millimetres of rain pre-tournament. But I don't think that that's going to cause a major problem in terms of the green speeds and the fairway run that the tournament organisers would be looking for here. Right. Key player skills are required. Let's run you through the winning scores here from the outset. 2021 Rory McIlroy. 10 under par. 274 shots. Max Homer won him at 500 to 1, his maiden PGA to a victory. He shot 15 under 269. I did say to you a few seconds ago, that was a lower average score. There was no wind. Jason Day, 2018, 12 under par, 272. 2018 saw winds gusting. 22 miles an hour on the Sunday and up to 20 miles an hour on the Friday. I don't see that. So I think this Max Homer, 14 to 16 under, is in play this week at Wells Fargo. In terms of those key player skills required, we've only had three renewals and what we do... We look at those uh, strokes gained off the tee, approach around the green, tee to green, putting. Where did the winner that week fall in terms of the players that made the cut, in terms of those skill individual skill ranks, and then average it through? Now, the, 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 the major issue we've got here is, and say major issue, it's just the way that it is, is that Jason Day won this tournament in a completely different way to Max Homer and Rory McIlroy. So it kind of screws with the averages. Jason Day was 19th in the field for strokes gain off the tee. 50th, yes, 50th for approach. That's a rarity. 
First for around the green, so the proper Jordan Spieth ma uh, magic was happening. Ninth for T to green, purely with the driver and with the around the green game, and second for putting. That's how Jason Day won. Let's look at Max Homer. 18th for off the tee, so very, very similar. 12th for approach, 41st for around the green. 12th for tee to green, 1st for strokes game putting. Rory McIlroy, strokes gained off the tee, 18th. So we've got a 19th and 18th and an 18th. Strokes gained on approach, 10th. Very, very similar to Max Homer. Around the green, you won't believe this, 41st. So exactly the same as Homer. So pretty much average. Let's just, let's just check that out. Where did that actually stand up? Basically, yeah, neutral. Neutral on around the green. Tee to green, 9th. Strokes gained putting, 3rd. So, Jason Day off the tee, yes. Around the green, a wizard, putting second. Max Homer, great off the tee, great on approach. Didn't need or was neutral around the greens. First for putting. Rory McIlroy, exactly the same model. Third for strokes game putting. That's incredible. So, effectively, of the three winners, it averages through that strokes game putting for the champions here has been second place in the field. Wow. Also, if you look at the previous winners here, uh, top 50, I believe, for... Let me just bear with me, bear with me. You know how organised I am if you're a regular. Uh, I need this spreadsheet here. Top 50, I believe, for driving distance, the year they won. In fact, actually coming into the event... So, yeah, McElroy, of course, was third for driving distance. Max Homer was 50th. Jason Day was 19th. So top 50 for driving distance and also top 40 for distance to apex. Now, that's interesting in itself. Uh, but in modern day golf, saying that you've got to be in the top 50 off the tee and top 40 for distance to apex doesn't overly wipe off as many of the elite players that you'd want it to. Because, of course, that's the way that the modern golfer is actually built. Uh, McElroy, Cam Young, Cam Champ, Ben Arn, Gary Woodland, Wyndham Clark, Davis Thompson. We've got Keith Mitchell, Cam Davis. I could go on and on and on with players that fit the bill. There are a few, though interestingly, that don't follow that model. And I'll mention them to you because I like to do things like that, give you a bit of value you might not get elsewhere. Players in this field that don't follow that model, you might be surprised that Xander doesn't. Xander doesn't fill, fill, uh, Xander doesn't fill those requirements this year. Jordan Spieth doesn't follow those requirements. Colin Morikawa doesn't follow those requirements, and nor does Justin Thomas or Matt Fitzpatrick. So there you go. If we look at the trends, we look at the data, those four players won't be winning this tournament. So, might have been worth watching just for that. So that's where we're at in terms of what we're looking for off the course. I, of course, want power. I want high ball flight. And then... Lo and behold, we've got to find somebody that's going to be top three in strokes game putting. Good luck trying to find that. I will go through my rolling eight-week stats in a short while. Just for your information, and I know it's a, um, I know that it's a sample of three tournaments, but even so, the only two tournaments I can find where strokes game putting has been more important or kind of similar importance Sony Open Century Tournament of Champions Houston Open that's played on Memorial Park those are the three I know if there's anything in that I'm not at all sure but this gap between T to green and strokes going putting which is working in reverse to what we normally see those are the courses where that happens in recent times right predictor model top 10 i have them to hand 
I've put a link to the the brand new predictor model in the uh, box. By the way, when you go to the brand new predictor model, if you want to use the old one, there's a little little link in the left-hand side that you can go through. My top 10 is here. The bookmaker of the week, again, eight places each way by the each way extra facility. Has to be bet 365. Simple as that. I am counting them up here. Tuesday morning, uh, all five of my selections this week were best price and ace places each way with bet 365, each way extra. I'm counting them up live now. One, two, three, four, five. Five of the ten best price, eight places each way with bet 365. That's a fantastic offering. If you fancy opening a new um, account with them, just click through to my betting preview, Bet365, smack bang in the middle of the preview. Click through, use the bonus code, get yourself their offer. Right, here's the top 10, my top 10. Come and build your own predictor model. Again, completely free of charge at Golf Betting System. Top 10, Connors is at 10, Corey. 55 to 1, Bet365, 8 places each way. If I mention each way places, all the 50 odds. 9, Luke List, 200 to 1 with Boyle Sports, yeah, 200 to 1 with Boyle Sports, 8 places each way on Luke List. He has to fire at some point, surely. I thought he'd do well last week, Mr. Cut. 8, last week's winner, Tony Finau, not 8 to 1 this week, he's 16 to 1 in this uh, tougher field. Bet 365, 8 places each way. 7 is Sung J.M., 25 to 1. With bet 365, eight places each way via the each way extra facility. Sun JM, a player that does not follow the pattern that we were looking for in terms of power and high ball flight. Hasn't got the pop, apparently. Six, Cam Young, 22 to 1 with Sky Bet, eight places each way. Five, Gary Woodland, 80 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way. Top four, Victor Hovland, 21, 20 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way by their each way extra facility. You have to click into that facility. If you just use the outright market, you're only going to get in five places each way. Top three, Morikawa is 22 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. I'd be amazed if Morikawa is not in the mix, but ultimately, a little bit like Abraham Anser two years ago, hasn't got the pop to win it, apparently. Two Rory McIlroy, 15 to 2 favourite. That is available at one spot right now. It's Triple H Sport, seven places each way. And number one, in terms of form in, Patrick Cantlay, 14 to 1 with Betfair Sportsbook, eight places each way on Patrick Cantlay. You've got to say, the form horse. You won't be surprised to hear that Patrick Cantlay over the last eight weeks is number one for strokes gained current form. So, Cantlay, Rory, Morikawa. That is the predictor model. Come and use it, free of charge, please. Send me an email, Steve Bamford at golfbankingsystem.co.uk. Send me a tweet at Bamford Golf. Let me know how you found the new predictor model. Rolling eight week statistics. Well, I told you that Patrick Cantley is the best player in the field over the last eight weeks. Key attributes, right. We'll all, I, I run through the top 12, of course. My betting preview, which is available via the description in the description box, uh, I rank the full top 25 in the field. Top 12s. Uh, off the tee, Cam Champ is tied at 12 with Shane Lowry and Colin Morikawa. Of course, Morikawa will be straightness as well as shorter. Uh, eight. Tie four, Sam Burns. I know that Paul Williams is very sweet on him. He has got a chance this week, Sam Burns. He's tied with Corey Connors. Adam Schenk, who's had a top 10 here, and Cam Young. Seven, Cam Davis on fire at the moment. Six, Sunjay in. Five, Gary Woodland. A tie for third, Hayden Buckley, who is a elite driver of the golf ball with Victor Hovland. Two, Patrick Cantlay. Number one, Rory McIlroy, best driver in the field. Strokes gained on approach, top 12, 12th place, Justin Thomas, 11, Sam Stevens, a tie for 8th, Hayden Buckley, Jason Day, a previous winner here, Ricky Fowler, 7 is Adam Spenson, 
Sixth, Victor Hovland. Five, Colin Morikawa. A tie for third, Xander Schofle and Jordan Spieth. A tie for first, Patrick Cantlay and Tony Finau. Let's do strokes gained T2 green last eight weeks. There's a huge tie for 12th. Wyndham Clark, Matt Kuchar, Shane Lowry, Gary Woodland, Cameron Young. 11th, Hayden Buckley. 10, Jason Day. 9, Denny McCarthy. A tie for 6th, Tony Finau, Sung J M, Justin Thomas. 5 is Xander. A tie for 3rd, Colin Morikawa, Jordan Spieth, Victor Hovland at 2, Patrick Cantlay at 1. Strokes gain putting. Now this is where it gets wild and wacky. <laughs> Tracking people's putting numbers. Wow. Top 12 in this field. Justin Suh and Webb Simpson who lives... On the seventh tee box. Well, not on it. Next to it. It'd be a bit strange if they were actually playing. It'd be quite cool, wouldn't it, if they were playing uh, on just Webb Simpson's own tee box where he lives. But anyway, Simpson is tight for 11th. Best putter over the last eight weeks. 10, Taylor Montgomery always involved in the putting stats. As is Chad Ramey at nine. Seven, Gr Emiliano Grio. And Jordan Spieth, that's a name that I never, ever expect to see in towards the top of a strokes gain putting metric is Emiliano Grillo, but he is. Six is Matt Fitzpatrick, another great putter. Five is Taylor Moore. Four is Sam Burns. So you can see why Paul Williams put him up on the podcast. Great driver, great putter. Has superb form around Carolina golf courses. Two wins at the Valspar that they play, yes, in Tampa Bay in Florida, but that is a Carolina golf course. Three is Michael Kim. Two is Sam Ryder. Number one, Rory Sabatini. So let's do strokes gained current form last eight weeks. Rankings in this field. A tie for 11th. Jason Day and Taylor Moore. Nine is Ricky Fowler tied with Colin Morikawa. Eight is Sam Burns. Seven is Wyndham Clark, Windy C. Six is Tony Fee. Now, 18 to 1 on Windy C didn't go very well last week, did it? Six is Tony Fee now. Five is Rory Sabatini. Four is Sung J Im. Three is Jordan Spieth. Two is Xander Schofle. Number one, Patrick Cantlay. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you took some real benefit from that. Historic odds of winners. Oh, my God. Is it relevant these days with this designated field? I don't know, but it's worth throwing in there uh, just to see what kind of average prices have won this in the very recent past. Max Homer won this last year at TPC Potomac, 40 to 1. He was 38th in the world. Rory McIlroy, 18 to 1 in 2021 here at Quail Hollow. He was 15th in the world. 2019, Max Homer. Forget about Max Homer's world ranking. It was way out there. In fact, it was, I should quote it to you, uh, 413th. Um... Yeah, I wasn't getting in that week either. Apart from that, we can go then to Jason Day. He was 14th in the world. Uh, there was also Ricky Fowler, 39th. I think we've said a 13th as well. So 38th in the world, 15th in the world, 14th in the world. There's a 13th in the world in, within since 2010 as well. So this fishing around in that kind of top 20, top 40 market... Isn't a bad shout. Homer was a 40 to 1 chance. McElroy 18 to 1. Homer 500 to 1 the time he won it here at Quail Hollow. Jason Day 20 to 1. Brian Harmon was an 80 to 1 winner at 2016 at Eagle Point. Roy McElroy 7 to 2. JB Holmes 66 to 1. Ricky Fowler 50 to 1. Lucas Glover 110 to 1. Rory McElroy when he won here at 66 to 1 in 20 to 10 was that number 13 in the world. 13, 14, and 15 since 2010 have won this. Maybe that's something we should investigate. 
Historic odds of winners basically merged there with official world golf rankings of winners. My selections. Okay, I got 8-1 to one on Rory McIlroy. I've gone win only. Do you really want me to explain it? Probably not. He's the best around here. He's won three times here. Two of those wins came off missed cuts at the Masters. The first time he won in 2010 and the last time he won in 2021. Both off missed cuts at the Masters. And it's not as if he's playing horribly. Yeah, he's no Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, he's no John Rahm. But, one, the Dubai Desert Classic, his first outing of 2023 on the DP World Tour. He's had a second at Bay Hill behind Kurt Kitayama. And he finished third at the WGC World Match Play before then losing, oh, sorry, missing the cut at the Masters. So I'm in. In this modern day age of PGA Tour betting, let's get brick over the back of the head, obvious. I'm on Rory McIlroy, 8-1 to one win only, 4 points each way. Next up for me, Victor Hovland, 2 points each way, 20-1 to one with Bet365 and their each way extra facility. If you look at this 25-year-old's um, CV, his resume of where he's played well in the United States. And yes, he's never won in the United States, but that could be a motivating factor for a guy that's won three times on the PGA Tour. Never in the United States. He's finished second at Torrey Pines, second at Bay Hill, third at Muirfield Village, third at Copperhead, where they played a Valspar, fourth and fifth at Riviera Country Club. He was seventh at the Masters a few weeks ago. Now, that that's a course to me where around the green game is absolutely critical. We know that Hovland struggles with that. But take him to a course where around the green isn't as difficult. Scrambling is more important up and down. And a streaky putter. Hovland can fit the bill. Anthony Kim in 2008. Rory McIlroy in 2010. Ricky Fowler in 2012. Max Homer in 2019. Maiden PGA Tour victories. We can't say that against Victor because he's won three times on the tour. But he's never won in the United States. I like that angle. I like the fact that over the last eight weeks, Victor Hovland in this field ranks only behind Patrick Cantlay. Strokes gained T2 green. I know his putting was awful at the RBC Heritage. But we know that putting can be down there and it can be up there. So... I'm on Hovland, 20 to 1 this week, two points each way. I'm also on, and this really does follow that narrative of first-time winners, the highest-ranked player in the world yet to win on the PGA Tour. Yeah, Cam Young. I'm on, two points each way, 22 to 1 with Bet365, eight each way extra by the eight places facility on Cam Young. The only place you're going to pick that up now is Skybet, eight places each way on their default market. Paul Tesori on the bag, who has, of course, well, he's carried Webb Simpson around here to a 21st, a 4th, a 2nd, a 21st, and 18th. He must know this golf course like the absolute back of his hand. Now, I know that Cam Young went to Wake Forest, but he admitted at the President's Cup last year when he played that he'd never really played, he hadn't played Quail Hollow. And then I read an interview, and it was with him and Colin Morikawa, and Colin Morikawa was saying, playing Quail Hollow in tandem with Cam Young was just unbelievable when this guy's banging it 340 down the middle of the fairway, and I'm going in with wedges and nine irons into these long par fours. And that is the fact. Cam Young built for this golf course, Tazori on the bag, Knows the golf, the golf course intimately, where to miss, where to get to pin positions, what pin pins, positions to go for, what pin positions not to go for. It's a marriage made in heaven. Young, he won't be thinking about the PGA Championship. He'll be thinking, I can take my maiden victory this week. That's what I think anyway. Cam Young, I think it's a married made, marriage made in heaven. Two points each way, 22 to 1 with bet 3, 6, 5, 8 places each way. I then go out to two longer chances. Now, I made a mistake last week. In fact, I probably make a mistake most weeks back in Gary Woodland. 
But Gary Woodland in Birdie Fest is an absolute no-no. 142nd last week for strokes game putting. Ouch. The metric I take from last week, though, that he was third 42 degree. Only Tony Finau and Stephen Yeager were better. He is absolutely... I mean, listen to this. After Mexico, across his last six made cuts, Gary has never been out of the top 30 for driving distance. Top 20 for strokes gained off the tee. Plus, top 10 for both total driving and ball striking. He's been positive with the putter three of his last four visits to Quail Hollow since it switched to Bermuda Grass Greens from Bent Grass. So if he can putt even neutrally or a stroke better than neutral one and a half, which he has done here in the past, Gary Woodland has to be a factor at 90 to 1. I'm not saying he wins it. But for an each way back, I thought 90 to 1 was absolutely magnificent. It was too big. He's 80 to 1 with William Hill. In a lot of places now, you're getting 66s and 60 to 1s. Gary Woodland, 90 to 1. Bet 365, eight places each way was my, bat, was my bet. One point each way. And finally, everyone on the Golf Bank System podcast has built, built into this narrative. Now, Cam Champ, is a missed cut machine. But he's got four career wins in 136 events. The guy can get over the line. They have come off previous finishes of 8th, 25th, 28th and 11th. And when you are dealing with one of the very longest drivers of the golf ball currently on the PGA Tour, you won't be surprised to hear that his wins also came when he is most confident with his driver, of course, with victories coming. Off of total driving ranks in his previous outing of 1st, 18th, 4th and 6th. Across his three PGA Tour victories, that equates to strokes gained off the tee performances prior to the victory of 1st, 1st and 1st. More tellingly, for a player who can play awfully for prolonged periods of time, and we all know that, Champ is also one to back when his tee to green game peaks. Again, his wins came off strokes gain tee to green performances of 15th, 12th and 19th in his previous outing. Prior to last week, the Mexico Open 2023 had seen Cameron only manage finishes of 53rd and 35th, mixed in with six, yes, of course, six miscuts. But his performance at Vidanta last week was excellent. 10th after 54 holes, Became 8th on Sunday, which was Sam Champ's second top 10 finish of the season. He also finished 8th, bizarrely enough, at the, Z uh, the Zozo Championship that they play on that tight classical golf course over in Japan at Narashino. He should be very confident, ranking 1st for total driving, 1st for total accuracy, 4th for greens in regulation and 1st for ball striking last week. Strokes game wise, that equated to 4th for off the tee. 11th for approach and 8th for T to green. 4th for off the tee, 11th for approach, 8th for T to green. The last time we followed this narrative was actually last year he'd finished 10th at Augusta National. The Masters, there you go. He, we then backed him at the Mexico Open where he was neck and neck with John Rahm and Davis Riley and the likes. Fell back on the Sunday, still got a full each way finish at 50 to 1. I scragged him for this. Bear in mind. He has a top 10 finish at Augusta National. He also has a top 10 finish at the 2020 PGA Championship at TPC Harding Park. So two top 10 finishes on two classical, long, difficult golf courses. He can do it. I managed to get 300 to 1 last week, uh, yesterday. Bet 365 each way extra on Cameron Champ. That's mad. He's been backed in, I know, severely since then. But just have, just have a look around. Next week... At the AT&T, Byron Nelson, he will be missing the cut. But this guy can hold together a slither of form for two outings. That's just fact. Get on board when you can. So Cameron Champ, 300 to 1. 
90 to 1 on Gary Woodland, and then the guys that I think are going to be pushing for the victory. 22 to 1 on Cam Young, 20 to 1 on Victor Hovland, 8 to 1 Rory McIlroy. All of those prices, of course, with Bet365. It's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. We'll be back next week for the AT&T Byron Nelson Lottery, where we might as well just back KH Lee as he goes for his third victory in three uh, tournaments at TPC Craig Ranch. It is the PGA Championship curtain raiser. Should be a blast. Bet responsibly. I know you guys do. Don't forget golf betting system, completely free of charge. All of those resources. Don't forget, hit the like button. Let me know who you are backing at this week's Wells Fargo. And, of course, subscribe to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Bamford Golf. See you.